Today we have one of the fun radios to see in the shop. This one's known for a lot of problems. Uh, no power, the display, AM, FM, the volume control, no audio, tape cycles, CD does not work. This is usually from uh, late 90s, early 2000s. Uh, Nissan, uh, Pathfinder, Maxima, and Altima also found in the uh, Infinity as well. We're going to go over all these problems, show you how to disassemble disassemble the radio and check it and so on. You are going to need a uh, small Phillips screwdriver and hope you're watching Don. As for the no power uh, with the radio not turning on at all, this could be a fuse problem. Uh, there are several fuses depending on the model radio you have. This this particular radio is a PN2261. Uh, we have seen a no power problem. Our website, Car Stereo Removal, if you follow it through to your year and model car, will show you wire diagrams if you want to get into checking power at the back of the radio. But usually no power problem is one of uh, possibly three fuses depending on your system. This is the Bose system, although this is a Clarion manufactured radio. Uh, no power. Uh, check the fuses in the car. There's one in the uh, regular fuse block usually labeled radio, one out of the under the hood labeled backup. If these two are good then we're going to get into the problem here. If the radio uh, turns on but the uh, volume control does not work well, sometimes taking the edge of your finger and moving the volume, moving your uh, finger side to side along the edge of the volume control causes friction inside the control and can sometimes clean it up that can fix the uh, erratic volume control or help figure out if it is a volume control problem. Uh, in many cases that will just uh, clean it up for you but not make it perfect. What you can do with finger pressure is uh, pull the knob straight off. It does take a little bit of pressure and there is a little opening around the control. Now this control uh, is, sits in the radio like this and what we have is a metal base and a green base and what we're attempting to do is to spray our contact circuit board cleaner into the small opening here this is without removing the stereo from the dash and you could spray in here several times we have a chemical here that uh, uh, dissipates uh, once used. Don't use a lubricant because a lubricant tends to stay and this can take several sprays. Once you spray it you rotate the control. This can many cases also uh, uh, straighten this up so that uh, you don't have to remove the stereo for the volume control problem. Now we're going to get into the disassembly of this radio. Uh, also if you have the display problem where it seems to work or not sometimes you can push on the face if you can push on the face in a spot, this helps tell us also that the problem is within the radio for the display. So to start with, we're going to remove uh, one Phillips screw on the top on the back here. Uh, if you need help with removal of this stereo from the dash, again, see our website. Our website is uh, carstereoremoval.com. We're going to pry the outside edges of this cover up, and this will allow us to take the cover off. This cover also has a couple of locks in here that help hold this face on. We're going to have to remove the face to get to a couple of these problems. And we're going to remove the cover. We're also going to do the same for the bottom cover. The bottom cover has a screw here on the back and we're going to remove this one screw. Uh, the problems here, we're going to give you part numbers as well for all these parts uh, that are going to be needed to repair this if you care to uh, order them or take care of them. Uh, several parts are no longer available through Clarion for this radio as for the uh, uh, laser uh, for this radio which is very common to go out for the CD. Uh, there are ways to get around this even though that part is not available if you're having CD problems but we will be getting to that. Now we're trying to pry the bottom cover off. This will also release the couple of latches on the uh, front face that help hold the front face in place and remove the cover. Now to get into the volume control and so on, we have uh, tabs along the side, little black tabs, and we're going to go in with our flathead screwdriver and push this tab down and at the same time push it forward. Now there is a connector to this front face, so we just want to barely start prying this face off because it needs to come straight off because of the way it connects to the rest of the radio. Now that we've released all these tabs, we're going to push the face straight off. 
Uh, the reason for that is we have two main connectors here on the front of the board and they if you look they sit pretty parallel with the circuit board here's one small connector and here's the second now these connectors made up with the two connectors here so when we go to put this face on we're going to make sure it lines up properly not to so that the connectors will line before snapping it on but we have several problems here on this uh, radio here on this front face we have the display problem which uh, seems to be common uh, this is usually a poor solder connection and usually to take care of that you're going to take your soldering iron and s you can see pins all across the top of the display and pins across the bottom of the display we're going to go through and repair all the solder connections both uh, top and bottom here now if you're having a volume control problem or a backlighting problem we're going to remove the tab here on the side I'm going to clean this up because the volume control sits over here uh, we've seen the solder on the display itself cause problems we've also seen on the uh, main connectors here at the bottom the two connectors on the board there are solder connections across the top solder connections across the top here solder connections across the bottom and the bottom here usually these connections across the bottom are much easier to get to once you remove this circuit board uh, but the circuit board has one two three four five six seven eight screws these eight screws are all coarse thread and they're and they're uh, <coughs> all the same we're going to remove those the uh, volume control which sits right here uh, has uh, three connections on it uh, three along one side that deal with the rheostat portion of the volume control and two connections at the bottom that deals with the push switch. We also have two major soldering connections on the sides coming up through the board. So we're going to, usually it's easier to unsolder this control before you take the circuit board off. You can unsolder the control and when you pull the board off this will give you access to all the lamps. The lamps are 12 volt lamps. They're a grain of wheat is what they are called and there are many light bulb you can replace light bulbs at that time replacing the control here we have a uh, volume control which happens to be uh, this is the part number for the volume control uh, I suggest uh, if you're ordering that the control is only about eight dollars online uh, through uh, several of the distributors for Clarion parts uh, that will take care of the volume control problem also they usually list if you go through by model number other parts available for this as well but uh, this would uh, is going to take care of the volume control and possibly one of the display problems now I'm sure that going through this radio is not going to take care of 100% of the problems uh, if you have comments about the video please leave them but if you have questions that need answering and uh, following through on our website you're unable to locate that help uh, it's best to contact us uh, next we're going to get into uh, the uh, other no power problem if there is uh, power to the radio and the fuses are good uh, the radio, uh, we're going to place it upside down with the front towards us. We have uh, several uh, connections here that deal with uh, powering up the radio. And we're going to put our uh, meter in volt function. Obviously, we are able to test these in the shop. But we have three transistors that sit along the side over here. Uh, one deals with the uh, backup power to power up the radio. One deals with... Uh, uh, the supply voltage to the display it's like a 2.6 volts and then the third transistor here supplies power to the radio uh, the radio can turn on uh, but have no audio or no power and that's this transistor usually what happens is you will find poor solder on these connections so it's always good to touch up all nine of these connections for the power supplies now we've seen one strange problem with the uh, display circuit uh, where the display would not come back up, but of course we have a little helpful card here if you're able to read voltages we have the center transistor here and the center transistor supplies a 2.6 volts filament voltage to the display on the radio and we've seen the transistor be good but there are two other little components that sit right up in front of it uh, one is a resistor and the other is a Zener diode this is a uh, 2.9 volt Zener diode. Uh, 
usually we want to take our meter out, put it in ohms function, and we want to test to see if this uh, diode, Zener diode, is shorted. Now it, it sits uh, at the at the uh, at the center transistor. The resistor sits right in front of it and the diode sits here right next to it. And we want to just test this in ohms function just to see if this diode is shorted. I've seen this diode shorted which won't allow this transistor to work properly. Uh, this is a 2.6 volt zener if that's a problem. We have the, the two transistors here uh, dealing with uh, the filament voltage which is uh, powers the display and then we have this second transistor here which is uh, Q407. Q407 is a 9 volt power supply so we're going to have uh, 12 volts at the middle pin on this one and 9 volts out on the uh, top pin here. Usually again this is going to fix your uh, power problem and your display problems if you have not found poor solder on the front face. These two transistors are both uh, 2SD 2012s so these are easily replaced if you find you have a shorted or bad transistor. Now that's going to take care of several of the problems. Um, we have several others with the uh, CD not working properly and in order to disconnect the CD we're going to come down to this white ribbon cable that runs underneath the CD player and solders in on the uh, main board down here. Now we're going to gently try and lift this cable straight up from the connector here and lift it straight up. There we go, it lifts out. We want to be very careful not to knock this white piece off. This is what helps add thickness to this ribbon cable to push the connectors against the connections once it's pushed back down into the uh, connector here. And we're going to release this up just to let it release a little bit. And we're going to remove the CD mechanism next. There is one screw here on the front at the right. One here in the back as well. Uh, this also, these uh, four screws that secure the mech are, also have little locks on each side, so we're going to have to pry this mech up and out of the mechanism here. Uh, this CD mechanism, like I mentioned, uh, the CD lens itself is no longer available, but the uh, CD mechanism uh, is also no longer available. But we were able to find this in uh, China, uh, I'll just say from experience we've learned when we order from overseas we always order one extra just in case. We get things from China quicker than we do ground UPS through uh, from California. So now we're, what we're doing is prying in against the mech and pulling the side of the case out so that these four locks can pass up out of the mech. Okay, I keep dropping it back into place here. There we go. And this mech should come straight up. We're going to watch the cable. Now, the CD mech, like I said, it is available. Uh, we ordered two of them. I guess this is going to be an, un a an unboxing here. But we did order two of the mechs. Uh, we did ha run into some problems with uh, the mech we ordered, which was an exact replacement. Happened to not be available at the time we ordered. So they contacted us and said, we have a different mech for you. It's the same mech, you're going to have to replace the circuit board. And we can see that starting here. Uh, the circuit boards are different. You're going to have to take some notes. This mech comes with an extra bracket on the front and the back, which are going to have to be removed in order for uh, the mech to fit back in. So we have the front bracket we're going to take off. We're going to make a labels as to where all these colored wires sit because we're changing the circuit board because they're not the same. However, the mechs are the same. I mentioned earlier uh, ordering a new mech and replacing the mech. Now the best thing, uh, I have four different mechs here, CD mechs, all look basically the same. Uh, when ordering your mech, it's best to uh, off your original uh, mech, find the part number to see if you can locate this part number. It, it is still available readily overseas. Uh, sometimes you'll find that you cannot get the exact uh, part number. There are quite a few different part numbers on these mechanisms. Uh, when it comes to uh, um, replacing these mechs and finding the right uh, replacement, you, you want to uh, 
turn over these mechs, they, they all pretty much look the same. Uh, again, on, on the bottom side with the circuit board, but sometimes you can order a replacement mech and swap circuit boards, but before you do that, you must check to make sure that you have this ribbon cable here coming down to four connections, which is very common. Uh, when looking for your replacement online, they show pictures of both sides. Uh, the wires go red, yellow, brown, and black. Now, the most important uh, one to uh, look at is the ribbon cable coming up from the laser because the mechs, like I say, they all look the same. There are differences when it comes to circuit boards and lasers. And the original uh, circuit board and mechanism has two little silver solder connections and that happens to be on connection number two and three counting up from this side of the ribbon cable one two two and three have little silver connections on it now with the same exact mech with a different circuit board this one has a different laser in it because you can see the silver marks here they're on uh, connections coming out of the connection they're starting at the bottom they're on five and six so even though these mechs look the same these this mech will not help you because the laser that you need is not in the correct position for uh, your original circuit board. So look closely for these uh, silver bubbles here. Sometimes when you get the new mech as well, uh, this may be one big bubble. A lot of times when shipping lasers, they short the laser so it doesn't power up accidentally or whatever gets something to cause it to go bad. They usually bubble that with solder and you might have to remove the solder from that bubble so that the two lines don't connect. So this is just a, a job of disassembly, swapping the boards over and putting this back together to take care of the CD mech. So next we're going to move on to the cassette mechanism. We've seen some problems with the cassette mechanism where the cassette seems to cycle, uh, which means it you get in the car and you can hear the cassette ejecting. You can hear a lot of strange noises and things going on as well. Uh, the cassette mechanism itself is held in place with uh, four Phillips screws again. These screws are all the same as the ones we've removed except for the uh, coarse ones from the front face that deal with holding the circuit board in place. Um, cassette problems, normally we see the uh, cycling like I mentioned. This is usually a timing switch problem, and we're going to have to take real close note on this one because there is an alignment procedure on this cassette mech. And I'm going to see if we can get it all explained to you and get that lined up for you as well so that you can take care of this mech. This is the problem with the, the cycling here is there's another switch that's similar to the rheostat in the volume control, which tends to get dirty. Now we're going to turn the mech over and we're going to remove this bottom cover. Four screws hold this in place. Now these screws are different from what we have been removing. They're a little bit smaller and finer. These four screws secure uh, everything in place here. If you're looking at uh, replacing the belt on this, which is a, a common problem, the belt is till, still available. This is the belt part number. The tape switch, if you want to replace that, uh, that we're going to show you how to get access to right now is a part number here. Now this tape switch is, you can replace it. We're going to show you how to clean this up. Uh, the, the belt usually runs about $3. Uh, the tape switch is about $3.50 and there's shipping on them. These are relatively inexpensive parts. And we're going to have removed the four screws. We're going to gently lift this cover up and you not going to see much or hear much going on, but we're going to be very careful because there is a ribbon cable across the back here into this circuit board on the bottom of this plate you're lifting up. So we're going to sort of hinge it back or sort of lift it up and sort of hinge it up without damaging the cable here because you can see it runs into here. Now this is your tape switch here. And there's some interesting alignment procedures here. And what we're going to do is we're going to take our flathead screwdriver and we're gently going to pry this dark gray gear straight up and off. This is going to allow us to move the mech around. Uh, see if you can see this clearly. I might have to clear the board up here, but this is the alignment I was talking about. Now, we have several things going on here in order to put this mech back in place properly. Uh, we have, let me see, we have, if you look closely at this long dark gray piece that goes up and down, there is a little mark here on the side. Now this mark, we're going to try and 
push this gear, move this gear up and down till it aligns with another mark right down here, which we cleaned off. Let me see here. Okay. Now we're going to bring that mark right down to, you can see the mark right in here in the opening, and you want to line those two grooves so that the mark on the dark gray lines right up with the mark on the uh, main mech itself. Now that aligns this part of the mech. Now we're going to get back to the, the tape switch which we mentioned here. This tape switch does many different things and we're going to gently with our flathead screwdriver, this is a two-piece switch. It's a uh, light gray with a dark black bottom and we're going to go in between these two pieces just slightly and attempt to pry that up. Now we're going to pry this up and what we're going to see here is four tiny brushes here and we happen to have a small sanding pen and we're going to put some bristles on here and we're just going to go touch these bristles up just to clean them up. Now we're going to do the same for the the switch array that's inside this contact. We just don't know if you can see it properly but there is some grease and dark and gray spots in there so we're going to take our sanding pen and just go around this a little bit just lightly clean this up and uh, bring it back to a, a get the lubricant all off of it. Now that's clean that up and we're going to take our q-tip again and clean out any other debris and so on and clean that up and this will look nice and shiny now if you can see how that looked compared to earlier. Now we're going to take the switch and we're going to be very gentle not to bend these four pins and we're going to place this right back on top and push it straight into place. You'll hear it snap into place. Now there are a bunch of markings on this wheel. This gray part of this wheel does rotate. Now there are several marks here. Uh, let's see, there's a, a big square one here at the very bottom. And if we come around, then there's a circle with a little indent on the edge of the gear. And we come around that what looks like a diamond. Then there's one that looks like a lollipop with a stick. Then there's a slight groove in the bottom. We're going to keep coming around. Then we have a triangle with a notch in the side of the gear. And then finally we have a triangle with a long line. Uh, what we're looking for is uh, a uh, configuration of this here on the side of the switch. Uh, there are four solder connections. And I mentioned the little triangle down here at the very bottom of the base of the uh, black piece here. That sort of points up and we want to align this triangle with the long line directly up with it. Now if you're inclined to replace this switch, uh, the th part number has been here as well. Um, it is a four solder connections and then there's two pinch plastic pinch fits and you push these in and the switch comes right out, the new one pops in and you re-solder. Now uh, back to putting this back together, uh, we're going to check the belt of course. This looks good. Uh, we have a switch up here at the top of the uh, ribbon cable here and this switch goes in and out depending on which position the mechanism is in and we want to be very careful not to knock this little piece off. I don't know if you can see it there. Let's see. Um, there we go right there. You can see the uh, white piece of the switch and we can push that in and out to make sure that's okay. Now we want to make sure that that switch lines up with this little plat, uh, piece here that is a metal piece that determines which function the cassette mechanism is in. Uh, again, we're going to check the, our alignment point here on our switch. We're going to check our alignment point here. There's also a second at the top here with a triangle with a line to align that mates here at the top. Now don't be the first to jump ahead, but we still need to put this gear back in without moving this plastic timing gear and in most cases it doesn't fit properly or go all the way down but what we do have over here on the side is the uh, gear mechanism and this is the motor which has a worm gear on it which spins several motors to spin the metal gear and what we're going to do is take our finger to the side of this worm gear and and spin it and as we spin this worm gear uh, here we go you can see the gear on top move as well here. 
We're going to wait till there it goes and it pops right down. Now we're going to check our alignment points at the bottom and the top. They're right on. We're going to check our alignment top point again on the tape switch and we're going to put this back down. Make sure that this metal piece again is all the way to the outside because we don't want it to knock the tab off of the switch and break it. But we also need to put this down so that the back edge of this plate doesn't catch on the inside of the belt so make sure we don't get the belt caught in there and this should all come right down and fit right into place we're going to put this back together now uh, you may find several things here I'd say this probably takes care of most cassette problems uh, about 90 95 percent of the time uh, the remaining I would split between uh, you hit the gear and through the alignment out while putting it together it may take a second chance at alignment we're going to check to make sure there's no debris in the mechanism uh, after putting all the screws in and uh, in many cases if uh, the remaining it doesn't work with a second realignment you have a bad switch which is very rare but that is available uh, hope this video has been helpful. Uh, if it doesn't cover any of the problems that you're having with your radio, uh, our contact information is at the end here. Hope this video has been helpful. Uh, please subscribe. Uh, thank you for watching.